Hi, I'm Rich Fry. I also go under the YouTube channel Hypershader, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use PrimVars to automate texture loading inside of Solaris Houdini. In this tutorial, I'll be covering how PrimVars can be used to automate texture loading via Karma Material subnets using MaterialX. In context to USD, the term PrimVar or primitive variable originates from RenderMan, which states they are useful to attach data to the surface of an object. This data can then be referenced by the shader to drive parameters. You can basically just think of them as attributes which drive shaders. Okay, so let's see this in practice. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to head over to your stage context. Now, if you don't know what the stage context is, it's basically the way we can manipulate USD data. So we're going to drop down a material library node here and quickly rename this auto texture. Now inside of here, we're going to drop down a Karma Material X subnetwork, and this is where we're going to be building our shader and eventually publishing it to an HDA. So let's quickly rename this auto texture. And we're going to dive in now and start setting up our automatic texture loading in system. So we can do this using the USD UV texture. Um, and the reason we're using this node over the material X image node is because it's got that file input on the node. So we can set our USD primvar reader to string and we can plug the output of that into the file. Now you can see here, I'm setting the var name to diffuse. Um, and the var name is basically going to be the name of the primvar you're setting on your geometry. So we can plug that result straight into our file and it will now load in the value of our primvar called diffuse. And I'm just also going to drop down a material X texture coordinate, set it to vector two, just so we've got UVs on our object. Now, once I've done that, I'm just going to set this up for all of our different other textures. So we've got a roughness and a normal map. So make sure that your var name is identical to what your prim var is going to be. And that way you only need to set the shader up once and all your textures will flood in automatically. So it means you could technically use one shader for multiple assets as long as the prim vars are published correctly. Now I'm going to drop down a standard surface node and Realistically, you could use a BSDF or the standard surface. Um, so if you are using the standard surface, you just plug that into the surface output. Uh, but in this tutorial, I'm actually going to be using some BSDF nodes. So let's delete that and bring in a diffuse BSDF. Now, this is just to go over a little bit about Material X. So we have these BSDF component nodes. Uh, and we're also going to drop down a dielectric for our specular. And we can layer that diffuse and specular together. And that will basically give us a very basic shader. So we're going to put our diffuse on the base as obviously that's our bottom layer and then layer that specular layer on top of our diffuse. So let's quickly rename this here. Plug that into the top and diffuse into the bottom and we'll plug this into our BSDF surface and then the out of our surface into our surface output. Great. Now we can start plugging in our textures. So we're going to drop down a normal map node here just to make sure we're converting our uh, textures from tangent space to object and then plug that in. And we're going to plug it into both of our BSDFs. Now I'm just going to quickly uh, rearrange these nodes just so they're not going to have as many uh, crossed noodles. And I'm going to quickly grab this R and plug that into the roughness which is our red channel. And I'm gonna grab our RGB and plug this into our diffuse color. Great, so now we've got our shader set up. We can sort of uh, hop outside into our uh, material library. And we're gonna create this HDA now. So if we right click and go down to um, our digital assets and we hit create new, we can now start naming our assets. So I'm gonna call this auto texture. Uh, I'm also just gonna remove the uh, authoring and the branch. Um, just so they don't get saved into the name um, and then also the version. So I'm going to say this to a uh, set this to a custom directory. So I can just put that into uh, a little HDA folder. Now this can be site wide at your studios. Uh, so, you know, all your uh, machines can access it. And obviously you can then roll this out across multiple machines so everyone can pick up your shader. Great. Now let's click create. And we can set some parameters now. Um, now, obviously, if you have your own shader, you may want some different inputs, you may want uh, different parameters, but for this, we're gonna keep it simple. Um, I'm just gonna quickly create some parameters for our variable names, just so we can access them from a top level and not have to dive in every time. So I'm just gonna quickly rename these here. 
Great, so now we've got that set up, I'm just gonna put these in a folder just so we can easily find them. And I'm gonna call this print bars. So I'm just gonna drag these in individually and just reorder them slightly. And then let's now start setting up the actual publishing of our print bars. Uh, or some might like to think it as texture publishing. So yeah, let's jump out back into our stage. Uh, we can import our asset. So I'm plugging that into the auto texture. And I'm just going to call this the name of the asset. So the Dutch ship. Great. So I'm just going to quickly find our asset on disk. And load that in. Now, it's a great asset. But if you rendered this now, it wouldn't have any textures. So let's actually get to setting up our texture prim bars. So the way I like to do this is I like to uh, use the material variation node. And the reason I do this is basically just because it's a very quick way to set up your prim bars um, and it just makes things a lot easier. I'm also just setting up a assign material node here just so we can assign our material. Um, so there we go. And now let's get into the actual prim var publishing side of things. So let's drop down our material variation node. Uh, the one thing we're really going to want to make sure of when we're doing this is setting our type to string. Now, what we can do is we can set the name, and this name is actually going to be the same as the uh, name of our prim vars we set in our shader. So as you can see here, I'm just putting in hello and goodbye, just to show you that this will create a prim var with a type string, with a name of hello, and a value of goodbye. So I hope that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, so we can actually now do this for all of our texture set. As you can see, it's also inherited by all the children components or subcomponents and uh, meshes. So it's going to actually apply to, to all your geometry below the point you've set of your primitive path. So let's just call this diffuse. And I'm quickly going to um, make sure it matches the prim var we've set, which it does. And then I'm now going to drop down a file node just quickly to find uh, where we've stored our textures on disk. So I think I stored them under textures, ACES CG, and uh, can't see them there. But if we just change that to show all files, you can see there they are. So let's get started. And now we've got that path. I'm just going to paste that into the value. And I'm also then just going to set this to diffuse dot udem. So we want this to be the uh, Thing we'd basically put into our texture uh, node. So as this is a udimmed asset, we have the udim tag. If not, you can just set it to diffuse.rat or something, or even something like uh, you know 1001. Um, if you just want to testing out e e independent uh, udim tiles. So that's how we do it for this. And I'm just going to set this up for the other uh, three different prim bars, which we uh, sort of laid out in the shader, which was the roughness and the normals. Great. So now we've set that up, we can now see that they're all sort of on our geometry. Uh, one thing to note is we could probably uh, set up a little Python script, which would read through a file, set up all these prim bars for you, uh, depending on what's in that folder. So uh, although this is quite a manual process, you can automate this a bit better. Uh, but as you can see now, all of our textures have loaded directly into our shader. And like magic, we've now got uh, an asset, which, you know, we could switch these textures out quite quite easily by just literally overriding the files or replacing the prim var value. And our shader wouldn't need any up updates at all. Uh, the reason why it's useful is because you can basically just set up a texture publishing stage. So here I'm going to set down a layer break and call this prim bars. And then I'm also going to set up another layer break uh, just below our, our prim bars. And this is going to be our material layer break. The reason I'm doing this is so we can basically save out different USD files. And so we can have one for our model, one for our textures, and one for our materials. And that way we can really debug where the issues are going on. Is it actually happening with the textures? Is it happening with the model? Is it happening with the uh, materials? And it's just a really quick way to sort of enable and disable things as we can just layer them in in different sublayers. Um, also, if yeah, you just need to sort of disable um, maybe your materials for, for render, you just need to disable that sublayer. Uh, you don't have to go reassigning materials or anything like that. So let's call this one material. And we'll just export these out now. So once we've saved those USD files to disk, we can now just grab our sublayer with our model. And we can copy it a couple of times and just replace the file path there uh, to load in our textures and materials. Load in our texture file. And then we can start sublayering these. 
uh, all on top of each other. So if just plugging them into the inputs. And if we view here, you'll see that the top level, we've got just our gray shader model. Uh, on our second one, we've then also got our textures coming in as primvars. And then finally, on our third one, we've got our materials assigned and created. So hopefully you can see the power of this. Uh, it's a really powerful industry style pipeline. And I hope you found this video useful.